Hey all, welcome to week 11. Um, so again, this week we are gonna move into the Australopithecines um, and then uh, the following week, week 12, we'll move into the Homo genus branch um, where we'll start off with Homo habilis. But this week um, we're moving into kind of the, the middle zone, which has a lot of different species. I'm gonna review uh, the major ones that you need to know, the big hint hints for the week um, right now. So in terms of Australopithecines, um, Anamensis comes about at 4 million years ago. Um, they have large canines and parallel tooth rows in the upper jaw. So again, their teeth are not as developed um, in developed in a sense that ours are um, or changed uh, to kind of occupy this area of um, omnivore. Um, and we'll get more into Anamensis in a second. Um, Afarensis, which is Lucy, she's um, 3.6 to 3 million years ago. And then we have uh, Platyops at 3.5, Gari at 2.5, who is considered by some, especially Tim White, who is a paleoanthropologist, to be the Homo habilis ancestor. Um, Afarensis is likely the first stone tool user. This is a giant hint hint. Realize that stone tools were used by Afarensis at 3.3 million years ago. And those stone tools were used to break bone and or remove meat away from bone. Um, these animals did not hunt, they scavenged. Um, so likely a lot of uh, Australopithecines who were eating meat were scaring away the large predators um, from their kills and then consuming the meat. Um, there is recent evidence, I just read an article a couple weeks ago about a kind of a um, dying off of these large predators in Africa and they've associated with these Australopithecines who start to eat meat kind of in this this time period. Aethiopithecus um, 2.5 million and then Boisei is 2.3. Robustus um, Sadiba at 2 million years ago are talked about in one of your videos at length. Um, and then again the Australopithecines become more specialized in diet. Um, Gari especially um, starts to consume meat. We have um, animal bone cut marks. Um, so protein from animal sources and plant sources become a combination omnivore diet during this time period, which is uh, huge for things like brain development, brain growth, um, physicality, um, physical growth. We'll really see that when we talk about Homo erectus next week. So this is a map, and this is a really good map. Um, this map shows you the different finds and all of the different um, uh, species that are associated. And you can see kind of that clumping that's up near kind of uh, the Ethiopia area, middle of wash area. And then you have Korotoro, uh, which is uh, Beragal Zali, um, which is uh, more of an obscure um, species. And then you have um, Africanus and Gari down in. Um, Southern Africa um, and said Debia as well. So some interesting stuff happening down in, in South Africa as well. Um, again, most people have only looked on the Eastern portion of Africa, uh, that Western portion where Koro, uh, Toro is located uh, is more in line with, with Tacadensis and where that find was. So there's a lot more to discover in, in West Africa, um, at least it would seem. All right, so moving into the main ones that you need to know, hint, hint, the main Australopithecines that you need to really focus on are Anamensis um, is first. Anamensis, again, is four million years ago um, and is the intermediate species between Artipithecus romatus and Australopithecus afarensis, which is Lucy. So what you're gonna see here is um, more upright bipedalism, um, maybe a little bit of change in diet, not a ton, uh, but definitely is associated with a different species. And it's kind of seen as the, the parent species of the Australopithecines that then kind of branch off into all these different directions. Um, it should be noted that there's a lot of crossover. It's not like one sprung up and then the other group that was there before magically just kind of died out at the same time. There would have been a lot of these different species running around, especially in that that kind of northern, northeastern Africa, um, savanna part of the world. Um, so you would have had most likely a lot of crossbreeding, 
and a lot of different hominid groups that are bipedally kind of um, interacting and and developing and isolating at different times and uh, through gene flow and then also mutation and natural selection and, and uh, um, genetic drift, having those four forces of evolution cause a lot of these um, minutia changes. Um, so there is kind of some um, debate within the field. Some individuals um, are lumpers and would just call all of these Australopithecines and and maybe wouldn't even break Anamensis and, and Afarensis and Africanus and Gari even into these separate groups. They would just say maybe, maybe they're just the same, but they're changing over time. So realize that lumping and splitting is a huge thing within the field as well. Um, in any case, you will need to know Anamensis. Um, Anamensis is, is again, that, that early um, ancestor. Um, fossil studies of the wrist morphology suggest that uh, Anamensis um, may have been a knuckle, walk, knuckle walking, um, which is derived trait and shared with other African apes. Um, again, this would, this would suggest that not necessarily that this was a full-time knuckle walking um, osteopathocene, that it was purely bipedal, but maybe was able to knuckle walk as well. Like say that the individual was foraging, then they would be knuckle walking while they were foraging on the, on the savannas. Um, so again, Artipithecus more for the trees coming down also kind of had that, that bipedal, but not as bipedal as Anamensis. So some interesting kind of, um, breaks here. Um, Afarensis, this is your, uh, Lucy character, right? Um, and Afarensis, um, is an extinct hominin that lived between, uh, 3.9. Again, this, we start to stretch out dates when we get different dates, uh, to about 2.9 or 3 million years ago. In Africa, um, Australopithecus afarensis was slenderly built, like the younger um, Africanus, who we'll talk about in a second. Um, a afarensis is thought to be more closely related to the genus Homo, um, which includes modern Homo sapiens. Um, whether or not it's a direct ancestor, this is kind of up for debate. And I will tell you right now, this is the debate. Um, the debate is always which species led to the Homo genus. And the two that are in debate are Afarensis and Gari. Um, Tim White and his crew believe that Gari is the direct line to Homo habilis. And Donald Johansson and some of the others in that um, the Australopithecine kind of camp of Afarensis find that Afarensis is the direct ancestor to Homo habilis. Now, remember, these are just theories. Um, we can't necessarily connect these individuals because we do not have DNA evidence. Um, the most famous fossil um, is the partial skeleton named Lucy, um, again, 3.2 million years ago, found by Donald Johansson um, at Arizona, who was playing the Beatles song, Lucy and the Sky with Diamonds. Um, and this is how Lucy gets her name at the dig site. Um, so again, this is a super, super important find, probably the one that everybody knows about. Um, but I would say um also form some misconceptions and the misconceptions are that suddenly lucy is there and that we don't have all these other pieces to the evolutionary puzzle and that is a large misconception um africanus so africanus is an extinct species obviously um and is the first one of the the first species to be described um out um and, and this is predating again in terms of description and discovery predating some of your um, uh, Arties and some of those others. Um, and again, I would say that it's one of the first. Um, in common with older Australopithecus afarensis, and this is Lucy, um, A. africanus was a slender build and was thought to have direct ancestor to, to modern humans. Um, fossil remains indicate that, that africanus was significantly more like modern humans than afarensis with a more human-like cranium, uh, permeating a larger brain and more hominid uh, facial features. Um, however, Africanus has only been found in Southern Africa at four sites. Um, and I would say that this is the problem, is that Africanus, even though it may look more human, they believe that Africanus actually split and became kind of more human-like, but Afarensis or Gari actually are the ones that continued down that path to the homogeneous branch. Um, 
In January 2019, scientists reported that Australopithecus sediba um, is distinct from Africanus, but shares anatomic similarities. Um, and this is this was again the lumper splitter debate. So now sediba is is separate rather than being lumped into the Africanus group. Um, lastly, we're going to talk about Gari. Australopithecus Gari is 2.5 million years ago. Um, again, uh, great soul Australopithecus uh, species whose um, fossils were discovered in 1996 by a paleontologist research team led by um, Asphal and Tim White. Tim White um, is at Berkeley. The remains also suggest represented the transitional stage between Australopithecines and the homo, the, the homo genre or genus. So, so again, this is a giant debate in the field um, that either Afarensis or Gari are the direct line of the Homo branch. Okay, so that was a quick lecture for the week, but the reason being is that again, um, there are some really great videos on a lot of these discoveries. Um, and I have never had field experience in this, this area of paleoanthropology. So I would definitely uh, pay close attention to the videos. Um, they're really good. Um, and provide a lot of necessary information. But I would say that that in terms of your hint hints, I've given you a lot of those for the week here um, in the rundown for um, things like stone tool use among um, af afarensis and the stages of animensis, afarensis, africanus, and gari. But gari and Afarensis look like the two that are being debated on whether whether they are the ancestors of the homo branch. Okay. All right, all. Thank you so much and have a great week.